And on my beautiful badges, Messi Coda back again with another taxi tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to make these lovely 3D arrows inside Pro Builder in Unity and also how to make them grow, spin and point to where you want to go. Sit back, enjoy and I'll see you all in a second. Hello, we've arrived. Get your own luggage. Okay, we're going to make our very pretty arrow. Go to Tools, Pro Builder, Pro Builder window, New Shape. I've got my cone selected. I'm going to, uh, well, I've got my cone selected. And why is it not working? Rotate a little bit. Oh, now we can. So make our lovely arrow. Then I'm going to go and change from being object selection to vertex selection. Change my view a little bit so I can grab these three at the bottom. And I'm going to just move them up here. Not too much, otherwise it's Star Trek, but around here. And then I'm going to go back to my object view. Click on center the pivot, and now our pivot is in the middle. Don't like this texture because we can't see much. I'm going to go make it nice and pinky. Now, I could also go over here to the face selection and change things as well. I'm going to go to UV editor and I'm going to select them all, convert them all to manual. Convert them to auto if you're going to be manipulating your shape a lot, but I'm not going to. I've set my arrow as it is. And then I can go and fit UVs. Uh, it, will, it will say here, what is it? Resize the selection to fit norm, within normalized UV coordinates. Okay. Uh, and then you can reposition everything. What I did was, because I'm not, I'm not an artist anymore, um, I selected them like this and move them over so that they're all next to each other and a bit more organized not overlapping but yeah kind of it's like it's like a puzzle game isn't it trying to make them all fit i'm sure you'll do a lot better than i will once you finish just save it out here's my little arrow that i made earlier and here's its pretty little <laughs> i can show you this look how pretty that is with its outlines and some parts here right let's make our ui now be warned this is a really ugly way of doing it i'm going to create a child well a parent now we can do empty parents this is awesome i love that feature by the way empty parents okay this is going to be for i'm going to call this one uh spin and this one another empty parent i'm going to call scale okay uh, and my cone we're going to make our cone nice and big. We're going to make the coney uh, about, let's push this button here. And my cone is ridiculously small. I should have made it bigger. It's now nice and big. Everyone loves a big one. Let's go here to UI and go canvas. And I'm going to call this one arrow canvas. My canvas is going to be, importantly, a screen space camera. I'm going to drag in my camera in there. And I'm going to change this to be scale with screen size. And I'm going to go for uh, 1920 by 1080 as a default. And it's set to match the width 100% over there. Now I'm going to make inside here a UI panel. Because I just like doing that to keep things organized. So I can arrange them prettily. And inside the panel I'm going to add uh, an image. Just so I can keep track of where everything is. And... Here it all is. Lovely. Now if I drag in my arrow, I'm going to... Oh, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to create uh, another parent. I'm going to call this one arrow. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to drag that all into here. Now it's there. Lovely jubbly. However, my arrow is pointing the wrong way. There we go. I should have done that inside... Pro Builder when we were making our arrow. We should have actually made it point in the right direction. But don't worry, this is this one's not going to rotate. This is the one that's going to be spinning around, spinning around. This is the one that's going to scale, and this is the one that's going to be changing where it's looking at. Okay. Everything's looking good so far. Ish. And um if I go over to the game here. It's looking huge. Oh, it is really looking huge, isn't it? So let's play about with our sizes. Uh, put that down to one. Okay, now it's far too small, isn't it? 
So, um, also, you see it's too far away. Plane distance. Put that down to one. And now it's right up close. We can see. That's better. So, um, we want our arrow. Uh, everything here is on one, one, one. And this one's on the 50. Beautiful, beautiful. Lovely. Lovely, jubbly. Okay. Um, now, our rotation of our arrow, oddly, it's got some rotation on there. Let's zero that out. I don't know why that was there. So that's better. The only thing that's got a rotation on it is the cone itself. Now, um, our arrow, let's increase the size of that a touch. Oh, I've got to click on this thing. Oh, no, wait, wait. Oh, don't click on it after you've changed the number, whatever you do. So there we go. Now they've all changed. Two is a good number. Two is a good number. Because I've made it huge down here. You see? If you didn't make this one huge down here, I'd have made that one even bigger. But that's good. Now we're going to make our, our script. And our script is going to be... We're going to call this one the GUI. I'm going to put here our script on here. Uh, we don't need this image anymore. We were using that to identify where our arrow was. And our panel... You know what? We're going to be positioning... I like that actually, right there in the middle. So let's get rid of that panel image. And here we could just, you know, change its positioning somewhat, a touch. So if I go up by 50, there. Yeah, not too bad. When we click play, we will have just a green blob in front of us. And we click play to see how does it look in position to the to the car. There we go. Ideally, we'd want it to be higher, wouldn't we? I've made a script, an empty script called Arrow Look, and I'm going to drag it on my arrow. It would be better if we actually called this Pivot. Pivot. Um, and we just change the GUI to say Arrow up here. All right, so Pivot, that's going to be the thing that's going to be rotating to look. Scale is what we're going to be using to manipulate the scale. We're going to be spinning, mix, spin, spin on this one. And this is the cone itself looking all lovely, jumbly. All right, let's so back over to the pivot. Let's open up our script. And we're going to put our, what do we call the other namespace? Badger? Badger, that was it. So we're going to put the, keep this in the badger. Just to show that we don't all have to live inside the messy. Because we can say that we're using messy taxi. There we go. Using the messy taxi, probably don't even need to use the messy taxi, but we're using it nonetheless. We need to have a couple of variables, so we're going to grab uh, two transforms. So let's pause it while a second while I just type this out for you. Now we've got the target that we're actually going to look at. We're going to throw in our spinner parent and our scalar there that we, we spoke about as well, because those are things that we're going to be manipulating. And over here, we're going to make a very quick method, a public void set the target so that we can actually call this from other things uh, transform and then we're just going to call it target and it's a very simple one it's going to be that if this target is null then well we can just say that uh, m target is null okay else you know what we don't even need to do that. That's just crazy. We can we they can just pass through null and have it by default as null, can't we? So that would actually be a lot easier. Let's just do that. Go um, and just then say target. How's that? That's a much cleaner way of doing it. Just always having it null by default, so that um, if somebody just called set target, it would clear it out. There we go. That's a much nicer way. Okay, we're gonna put a Oh, oh, we need a float for the speed as well. So let's put, um, let's just make it public because can't be bothered. Uh, public float speed. Here we go. And when we start, we're going to set our self to, um, to false, really. So this game, you don't even need to do this anymore, but I'm so used to doing it. Set active false so that we our um, pivot thing isn't actually going to be enabled in the scene and then we're going to have in our update now you fixed update or update 
Mm. I don't mind it with being update. Uh, this transform, look at the target. Look at target. But you know what? We should put a bit of error handling in here and just double check that we've got it. So if we do have something in the look at target. Alrighty then. Beautiful. And we might as well do the same for the other. So we're going to check if we've got a spinner. If we've got something in the spinner bucket, then spinner.transform rotate. And I only want to rotate one of the axes. And that's the last one. Uh, we're going to go and say speed multiplied by time delta time so that we're doing it by um, by time seconds not by uh, each time in the frame. Do you remember our friend Badger Dump? Well he had these enable where we were calling these or well, listening to these events rather and these methods. So we're going to grab them, copy, paste them into our new look script. We don't need these methods because we are going to using some of our new ones and we're going to go up here well you know what it doesn't need to be public it can be private it can be our little secret so it's going to set this target down here on mission we're going to be no there is no target on get mission we're going to say um arg one what is our mission our building where is it mission destination waypoint transform okay so that's our mission on our mission we're setting our target so we could just say here like we said uh full c go to sleep we can say wake up so uh true and over here obviously we got to put our force back in because we've got to turn it to sleep so we can now start dragging in things we can drag in the scaler drag in the spin and we don't need to drag in a target. We don't need to put a speed in either. We're going to click play and hope something happens. We'll go first of all through helicopter lane. I know what you're thinking. Why don't I just start the car closer to where all the people are? Well, I like driving. The first part gives me something to say. Pick up some speed. Enjoy the view. Let's get inside. There's our, There it is. Is it pointing at the right? It is pointing somewhere. Let's have a look. Is it pointing in the right place? It's telling us to go that way. It is the right place. Look. <laughs> it's like, is it telling us to go the right place? Well, obviously, we want to raise it higher up in our UE. And then drop him off. And it's gone. It worked. And it was pointing the right direction. That's pretty much it. All right, now let's show you quickly how we can just use Muck's uh, event system to spin and change the size of our arrow. I'm going to create two events here. I'm going to go to events, uh, create a mission event. I'm going to call this uh, just mission event because it's a general mission event that everyone's going to share. And I'm going to create a float event. Uh, well, a float event, I'm going to call this arrow speed because we are going to have many different float events. And I'm going to pop into my scripts. I'm going to show you. I've got two scripts. Spin my badger, and that basically gets the distance of what, what transform we're on versus the the destination, the waypoint of the final destination of the mission, and we get use that distance to calculate a speed. And I'm just getting it from the percentage of that, and minusing it from hundreds. So I'm actually getting how much you've completed rather than what's left, and in an update we're just invoking in this current speed which is the float event that we're going to drag in to this serialized field and if we go to our arrow look i've added in the mission event as a serialized field uh, cleaned up a bit some of these so a little bit, bit prettier we've got a set speed uh, method here but we're going to pass through a speed and down at the bottom here i've got my scalar that we're using this set scale so i'm going to be using that value that we've got from the speed and down here, we're just going to be on the get mission, invoking in this mission event. So, if I pop back over into Unity and go over to our little taxi. I'm going to add on here my uh, spin my badger. Spin my badger. Here he is. And I'm going to drag in the float. 
event. I've got a speed multiplier of five. I've had lots of different ideas about like working out the, the overall distance of the map and all that. And in the end, I was like, you know, I'm just going to put a multiplier of five in there and that'll be good enough. Also on here, I'm going to put a missions event listener. And we're going to drag in our mission event. There it is. And can I click on a little play? So wait every time my mission event fires off, I can say spin my badger spin my badger save that mission in spin my badger now if i go over to my little pivot uh where are you pivot and i can put a float listener event here and we can drag in our little arrow speed and over here we can drag in our arrow look and if we go to our look we should do yes there is dynamically we can set our speed from whatever value that is before I forget, we're going to drag in our mission event into the arrow script mission event. So otherwise, it's not really going to be doing anything. Now, let's click play. And that's all you needed. It's all you needed. So uh, what you don't want to have on your scripts are variables where you're having to drag and drop or do find object of type and to be able, or get component in another object all the time. Because you're relying on that other object to exist and it to find it for it to work. Instead, use methods or, or events in your methods. So you can go, hey, if you are if you are there, find it yourself. For the rest of us, we don't need to know about you. See, it's spinning now and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And why are we always going to the police station? It's supposed to be random. Yeah, that's it. If you do like these videos click a like put a comment it really does help with the algo if you don't then i don't think anyone else is going to find it tell all of your friends random people on the streets that we're nearly finished making our single player game so we can pop over into a multitude of different multiplayer systems and get it networked up so the kids can play against each other if you do like it click it till next time if you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now and down below there's that big juicy subscribe button and right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.